One of the knock-on consequences of young people taking drugs, we found out that this very easily leads on to knife crime and antisocial behaviour. Because of that, the next workshop that we delivered was on this subject. One Moment of Madness, which is Knife Crime and Antisocial Behaviour Awareness. This one is a hard-hitting, factual, evidence-based workshop. Video evidence is used and a martial arts expert takes part of the lesson. He will go through different parts of the body and he talks about the trauma of the impact of being in flight or fight mode. Having a knife wound and how dangerous it is, regardless of how much training you may have had. Then the classroom is turned into a courtroom and we invite in our friend, Judge Nelligan, who answers the questions of the students on any matters regarding the law, whether it's to do with alcohol awareness, drug awareness, the sentencing, and also obviously on knife crime and matters of antisocial behaviour. From the feedback that we receive from the students, he always comes out top of the pops. In fact, I'm now going to introduce you to Judge Nelligan. He can explain how he makes a difference to the young people. I think one of the best watchwords in our sessions is that expression, a moment of madness. Because that's what it is, really. It's so easy in the heat of the moment, if you've got a knife on you, to pick it up and use it. You've got to get your students to be aware of the dangers, the far-reaching dangers of breaking the law. From Jack the Lads, they become rather focused and interested and ask some very sensible and searching questions. Whether it's knife, drugs, sex, cyber crime, cyber bullying, it, it's the, the greatest gift that, that SOS Global gives is realization to draw attention to the pitfalls and what can go wrong and what can happen and I think these sessions we do are extremely valuable. I'm now going to show you some footage of an ex-gang member and also a knife crime victim and this is quite riveting actually for using this bit of video evidence and it was quite amazing to see that from the feedback from the questionnaires that we do through every session that um, I was really surprised to see that the young people actually wanted to, to see Dino um, which is the guy who's the knife crime victim and they were all wanted him to come into the school so they could do a Q&A session with him. They were quite fascinated by his story. No. no, do you know why it's too late? Because it's your arteries. Oh, no. What's in that artery? Oh, this is it's... a great group. What's in that artery? Oh, this is a great group. What's in that artery? Oh, this is a great group. What's in that artery? Oh, this is a great group. What's in that artery? Oh, this is a great group. What's in that and who has now learned his lesson and wants to help young people not to follow in his footsteps. I only ended up in jail for six years. I mean, I've, I've been to jail myself, and that's just a waste of life, and it's not do it. Yeah. Don't carry knives. It's actually done a lot of information, actually. It is quite handy, and I didn't realise my friend was that bad. You don't stop people. It tells you how, how quick it, um, knifing goes and how quick. You can die in easy how quick you die around the river knife and don't get involved with gangs. Children were they just watched it intensely, they really thoroughly enjoyed it. Well I've learned that it's your le if you get cut on the leg, it's quite serious. I didn't realise that. I would thought it'd be more a chest area or your neck area. Never in a family environment. Always children's homes, free schools, and then prison. But violence is even worse. Never get involved in gang culture because it leads nowhere. The only place it leads is a cemetery or prison. Have you ever been stabbed before? Four times. I never really thought about it. I never really got involved with women. I, my life was too hectic for relationships. It took a long time for me to get my head around my childhood and my past. It's hard to get away from it. Once you're in it, you, you're tired for life. The police won't let you go. You can try and turn a new leaf, but they never let you go. Yeah. You're always on their radar.
if you get into debt, you're obviously going to get the threat of violence. These people don't have any morals, do they? You know, people who mm. sell drugs have no morals. They have no worry about using violence. If you had your time over again, would you do things different? Of course, yeah. I would stay away from the gang culture. And if you carry a knife, you've got to be prepared that you've got to use that knife. Because if you don't, you pull that knife on someone, and he takes it off you, he's going to use it on you. And I thought to myself, this is no good for me. I'm, I'm, where am I in life? I'm nowhere. And this is where I'm going to be. If I carry on the way I'm going to be, I'm going to either be in prison for life or dead. And I chose to be alive. What do you say to those young people? Knife crime. Knives are for losers. You know, to pick up a knife, like I said before, is a, it, you have to use it. It's not, it's not a show, it's not a piece of jewellery. It's a weapon that could kill or maim. And if you carry it, be prepared to use it. You know, because if you don't, someone will take off and use it on you. So I just wouldn't carry one because you don't know what's around the corner. And uh, he waited outside and I went up to the flat and uh, there was a few lads up there that I hadn't seen for a while. like, And so they said, oh, stop and have a joint, make beer, like, you know. Uh -huh. So I, they said, well, like I said, I hadn't seen them for a while. So I, I sat down and had a beer with them and a smoke. And then I must have been in there for about half hour, I suppose. And obviously he was pissed off outside waiting around and he's come up all raging because I think he was he was he was on something that night anyway but um, we ended up having a scuffle in that it was only a tiny bed set anyway and uh, I ended up sort of falling against the the, uh, the door tripped over someone fell against the door and went back to him and that's when he, t he took out the knife and uh, stabbed me from behind in the groin which and to be f well, it was, I just thought I was dead. Did you? I honestly thought, that's it for me, I'm gone. It was a nine inch carving knife, um, nine inches Did of steel. Did you feel that? I felt it going, it was like a crunch. You cut through the main artery of my leg, and if it wasn't for my mate Simon, then then uh, I would have been dead, definitely. I lost about six and a half, six and a half pints of blood, I think. He said, like, the... Um, he, he sort of stuck his hands down there, and, or he stuck his hand down there, and he clenched. He said there was a the vein came out. He said it was the size of his finger, and it was just like a pressure hose. He said pumping he had to, blood. yeah, pumping blood out. And because uh, when I can remember when the knife went in, um, it just felt like someone had chucked a bucket of hot water over, over me, back, back to my legs, like you know. Uh. Well, this is this scar here is where the knife came out because it went in, it stabbed me in the groin, and this is where it came out. There, this is where they've opened me up. And I had a tattoo there saying, made in Exeter. <laughs> and now it says, mad in Exeter. <laughs> which is, and this is where I had the colostomy. I was mixing with people that maybe I shouldn't have been mixing with at the time. You read about this. Yeah. This is never gonna happen to me, like, you know? And then, but, you know, chances are it will do. If you're gonna be carrying a knife around, just don't be in a gang, then. Don't be a sheep. Just live your own lives. Don't follow people.